Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap. And now, here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Welcome back to Dare to Leap. Today, we have the amazing the so incredibly interesting and diverse Tara Bowman. I cannot wait for you guys to get to know her. She is a business strategist and certified master breakthrough coach. She helps fast track women business owners. Woohoo! She's talking my language there. Fast track women business owners with priceless business maps. Oh, I love that uh, term that you're trademarking business maps. As the creator of the business map method, she has crafted over 175 custom business models for clients who have gone on to build six and seven figure businesses. She's obsessed, and we're going to talk about this obsession. She's obsessed with collecting Chanel brooches and traveling and loves to come home to Houston, Texas, where she lives with her husband, three boys two spoiled Australian shepherds and an entitled rescue cat. Welcome, Tara. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Kathy. I'm so excited to dig in today. You're just full of energy. I love it. Oh, I feel like I'm uh, like you and I are on the same energy level and we're already buzzing. I love it. Yes. (laughs) Yes. So Tara, tell um, me a little bit about your journey and how you dared to leap from any starting point you want to where you are today. Perfect. Thank you for asking. And I'm probably not unlike a lot of people that are listening or people who've made that entrepreneur leap. As you say, I came from, I come from a very corporate uh, background. So I did a lot of uh, corporate consulting and I have a degree in computer science, which is in like a business degree. So you know, I really started my corporate career in the IT space. And then I moved into, you know, consulting and then uh, decided to, I actually opened my own um, store, a boutique for a few years because it just, I don't know, it sounded so fun just to, I love to shop. So I thought, well, why not be shopping for tons of women? And it was, and it was Was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was, um, And and it was right when my son was born. So he was only a a few years old. And as I know, a lot of uh, corporate, we'll call me corporate moms struggle with is how to balance having a career where, you know, you're built because like, I like to be on the fast track and as I'm sure you do too. And it's like, I wanted to go to the top and climb the corporate ladder, you know, and then you have that other side, which is like, but I also want to be a mom and how do I balance that? And it was so different. I mean, it was just so different, probably 15, 17 years ago when I was in that space, that there wasn't the opportunity that there are now around juggling and doing both family and having a fantastic career. So I didn't leave the corporate world because I was anti-corporate. I'm was actually a really good employee. I left because I wanted the more freedom, right? So did that for a while. And then it just was, I found having my own boutique, it was like, you, you just hit a point of, you know, where you can have, I think I had 15 employees at one time and, you know, and you just spend so much time and energy around the holidays. Cause that's when 50% of our sales would come in. And, you know, you just kind of start for me, I was like missing the family aspect of like the holidays and stuff like that. Uh, and you know, just oh, got yeah, with retail, that yeah, would be retail's, tough. Retail's brutal. Um, and but it was fun and it was time. And I learned a ton and it's something I really don't talk about because not many people like to talk about what they would consider a failure. And I had to really get uh, in my heart to be able to say it was time to move on. So that's what I did. Um, And then ended up going back into corporate consulting because that was my safe zone. And my husband relocated with his job. Uh, He had a promotion to come to Houston from, I'm from central Illinois. So we moved down to Houston and I thought, you know what? I was at that time I was working for Accenture and they're like, Hey, no problem. You can just, you know, your home office can be Houston and not Chicago. And, and I was like, Oh, okay. And then, well, you just need to travel like a lot. (laughs) And I'm like, Ooh, I had this little three, four year old child. And I'm like, I don't need family. So I got to rethink the plan. So 
Um, I was a trailing spouse for, you know, most of, you know, the moves that my husband, I would just kind of go where he went. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to try to find something more local and ended up going to a boutique firm here in Houston and did a lot of oil and gas type consulting and whatnot. And then got to that point where it was like, maybe you should do your own thing. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm making really good money. This is like, and then it's like, uh, it's time to move on, you know? And I'm like, you just started hearing the whispers and then they become loud screams. And, um, you know, for me, it was the last episode that Oprah, Oprah made on her TV show when I was watching it on a break. And I was so stressed out from uh, my corporate job. And it was like, knock, knock, knock. It's like, we all have a platform. What's yours, you know? And that's when I was like, okay, it's time to make the transition. So I went part-time. I asked to go contract, which nobody does. Um, cause I wanted that sense of freedom and I knew I wanted to build a business and create something while I still was making a paycheck. And I was pickier on the projects I took, which I got to do stuff with salesforce, salesforce.com because I knew I wanted to learn sales. That was a weakness of mine as an, as an entrepreneur. I was good at upselling, but I wasn't good at generating leads and all that kind of stuff. So I would take specific projects that I knew would help me when I wanted to, um, you know, be on my own full time. And I started in just business coaching and did like a low cost, high volume practice. I was able to get to six figures pretty quickly within a year. Um, but I, it, I got burnt out pretty quick because I was doing, yeah, you get, you can yeah. overwork very oh, easily. Yeah. Doing very it that easily. Way. Yeah. I, think I had 30 clients a month, but they were, you know, paying like 375 wow. a month. And it just was like, it was a, not a sustainable model. So I ended up like, I got to rethink this. And I was going to go back to the corporate world, honestly. And, you know, I was like talking to my therapist, <laughs> which it's so funny now. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm a, the therapist. I used to never talk about that. I'd go to a therapist. And she was like, you need, you're going on vacation with your husband. You two need to like, don't talk about this stuff, figure it out when you come back, enjoy your trip. And as soon as we went to Thailand, we got relaxed or, you know, drinking the margaritas by the pool. And I'm like, we need to talk about this. So <laughs> he thought I was ready to go back to the corporate world and, you know, and your husband or whoever loves you, they don't want to see you like struggling and working hard for little money. And I say little money because right a hundred thousand plus isn't anything to sneeze at in the entrepreneur world. But when you're making, you know, mid, you know, two fifty plus it's, it's nowhere near by the time you pay your taxes and all that kind of stuff. Right. So right. I was like, you know what, let me go back and create a plan and I'll present it to you. Like you're my client and you can tell me what you think. Uh, cause I wanted to really be on the same page with them. And I came back and created this plan, which is now the very first business map. So I like, laid out everything from, you know, the foundation of the business, the offers, the pricing, the marketing strategy, you know, how I'm going to deliver the customer experience, how I'm selling it and who's on the team and all. And now they're after like 175, they're way better. But my first plan was mine. And he's like, I get it now. And that was like the missing piece of like, he didn't see how everything tied in. And then I just started to build my own confidence around it and started scaling my business coaching practice. And haven't looked back since. So <laughs> that is the that is so, of Tara Bowman. <laughs> that is, I, I love that story. And I made a couple of notes to go back and ask you. Number one, uh, just know, I love that you put together a business plan, mm -hmm. um, business map, sorry, and shared it with your husband. Cause that's essentially what I do. I call mm -hmm. it a sales presentation mm -hmm. <laughs> in my own mind. Yeah. Anytime I want to do something and I know there's going to be pushback from him, yeah, yeah. like spend a whole lot of money yeah. um, on something that I want to do with the business. I'll put together, a, even when I decided to start my business and then when I decided to grow it to something different each yeah. time, um, I have put this together and gone and done a presentation essentially for him across the kitchen table. Uh -huh. yeah. And then he buys in because yeah. I learned quickly that if I just say, here's what I'm going to do, he goes, nope, nope, yep. we're not, I'm, I don't agree with that. No, nope. it's just not but worth if the I resistance. Do this, <laughs> yes. If I do the planned out, here's yeah. step by step, and here's how much we're gonna spend, here's what yeah. we can our potential to earn, our return on investment, how long it'll take us to make the money back, blah blah blah. Then he's like, Oh yeah. I oh I see and it now. Yeah. 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 What, 
What's funny is I didn't do that necessarily to get his quote unquote permission. And let's be clear. Cause we're very independent. Right. I, I agree. Not because, permission. No, it was more pre- presentation. What do you think? And then I'm like, I want your feedback because you're a smart dude. And like, help me mm-hmm. shoot holes in this model so I can fix it. And, you know, so it was really for that. And also just to kind of get our values on the same, uh, same page. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. He knows we are uh, something, not just. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. I'm not looking for his, I totally agree. And I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm not looking for his permission because yeah. I don't need his permission, no. but I am looking for his buy-in is kind yeah. of how, what I think about with it, yeah. because with that, with his full support and, and yeah, a, another brain thinking about this too, you know, hearing me out and seeing, did I think it through? Right. Did the numbers make sense? Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, then it's so much easier to do because you don't have that resistance yeah. because I did it the other way yeah. uh, before I figured out how to, how to work it better. I just spent the money and did what I wanted. Right. And then he would be like, what? You didn't even talk with me about this. I thought we were partners. And I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. okay. You were a silent partner, honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's not a partner in my business, but you yeah. know, in life yeah. as partners. So yeah. yeah. And then that, the values, that's a really important part mm-hmm. because I do value him. We mm-hmm. do have the same values in most scenarios. Yeah. There's a couple of differences that we have that, you know, irritate each other, but, um, for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. So like, Tara, I love that. Yeah. It's always ABC, always be closing. Even if it's your, your <laughs> spouse, your partner, you keep your kids and like clients, like it's, you gotta, it's, it's, it's a, the number one job we need as women entrepreneurs mm-hmm. is sales. And when you have oh, totally. that, like as wives, as everything, as, as, yeah. as moms, yeah, you gotta everything. sell your kids on stuff too. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Like where I want to go on vacation, when I want to go on vacation, if I want him to go or don't want him to go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, one of the other things that you said um, that that I want to go back and ask you about is you said um, like 15 years ago, it wasn't as easy as it is, as yeah. it is today to juggle both. Yeah. And I don't know that I see the difference. And I would love to hear what you think is the difference because I haven't been in the corporate world in a very long time. So, yeah, I mean, this is just based on kind of what I'm seeing, especially post pandemic with flexibility of being able to work from home more and be able to um, manage that. So as a consultant, I was either out on a client site or working from home a lot of the times. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and then as you're moving up, you're, if you really want to move up, like, and I just didn't see myself being like, you know, a one or two positions higher. I want to like, I want to be the CEO or vice president or whatever. Right. Of course. As as you're doing that, it becomes, it's, I didn't know back then it was a lot of a, it was being really good at sales. The more money you can bring in for a company, um, whether it's money or you can reduce costs. So more profit you help generate the faster you can move up in my opinion. (laughs) And you know, and it was, it's one of these things that in order to do that, it's, you know, what I experience is it's a lot of, you know, evening meetings, it's the dinners, it's the networking, it's, you know, going above and beyond it's working hard. And, you know, and as women, a lot of us, I mean, we're very smart at what we do in the corporate world. And I worked primarily probably 95% of my industry was men, 90%, 90 to 95. And it just was a man's world, um, you know, and trying to fit into that. I was trying to like, okay, how can I do it all? And I felt like I wasn't doing all of it. I wasn't doing anything well because you're trying to like balance. And I mean, honestly, Kathy, like the most, the most humbling thing for me was I was at a consulting gig and I'd been there probably six months and I said something about my son and the client looked at me and goes, you have a son. Like he didn't even know. Because I oh, just never thought yeah. I could talk about that kind of stuff because mm-hmm. they're paying a lot of money to like have me solve problems and stuff. Um, and I was like, oh man, like something's got to shift here. So right. it was like, it felt like a sacrifice. I had to choose either or, and I didn't have any good role models that actually did, did the, the family thing well and mm-hmm. the business thing well. And mm-hmm. the one, the women that I could model, they were, none of them have kid, had kids. 
And I feel like now it, it is a little different and easier diversity and like councils and initiatives are there for like, you know, so much more than what was even 15 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. and opportunity and the balance and the understand. And there's a lot of women in leadership positions that you can model now that do things better and more balanced and give you grace. If, oh, you know, heaven forbid you have to take your child to the doctor or something. <laughs> I would have never felt comfortable like asking my boss that. So it just, you know, I would feel like I couldn't be taken seriously. And a lot of that was probably my own filtering. We've talked some, about uh, no, that. everything you All said, I fun. totally agree with. Yeah. Uh, um, and I, I can tell you story after story after story of women who have literally been fired yeah. because they did have to take their child yeah. to the doctor. Right. And, it, and I just was like, you know what, why am, do I have to seek this permission when I can just do my own thing? And, um, you know, and I was able to bring in a good amount of consistent clients and the clients would stay on a long time because I didn't necessarily wasn't like upselling them all the time. It was just, I did my job and I did it well. And when you do that, they'll find more work and stuff that you need to do. Uh, and it was just time oh, to yeah. the break. And, uh, and then I was pregnant. I had, had twins as well. Um, so I had, while wow, you were still working at the corporate world, you had yeah, twins. Yeah. And then well, I, oh, had wow. in, I had in vitro even. So it was like, I knew I had yeah. a high percentage. I could have twins. And then, um, but I didn't think through, um, I have the babies and then what? And so I was like, oh, I was just so excited to finally get pregnant that I was like, Ooh, okay. So we did the nanny au pair thing. We had an au pair from Germany for a while oh, wow. and, and that was fine. But then again, it started knocking again, like, okay, Tara, like who's raising your kids here. And, um, so that guilt really kept pulling me back. And finally, I just decided that's when I really pulled the plug and was like, it's time to feel empowered and not feel any of the guilt being tied to a salary and, you know, the smart goals and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff and just see what I can do for myself. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so that is, uh, uh, hearing, hearing that inner voice and responding to that inner voice, they could get really scary. Yeah. Um, you seem incredibly confident. Did you ever have a fear of failing? Oh, all the time. And if I hadn't have went and I know we're, you're working on your NLP certification. I just finished up mine. And, and it was like, that was one of the big things I had to work on is not just my confidence. And if I set my mind to something, I don't know if you're into human design, but I have a very strong will center and, you know, I can power through things and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, I knew I could do it. I, I trusted myself to get it done. Um, but I had a lot of negative self-talk to myself, which was, you know, if my goal was a half a million and I came at like 450, I, you don't, no one else needs to beat me up because I did a great job of it myself. So the negative mm -hmm. self-talk, like, you know, like you can't hit your goals and, da, 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 and then, that, you know, and when you do that, it just mm -hmm. continues to keep manifesting and it shows up as stress in your body. And, it literally, I mean, it's, I, you know, it, it would show up for me as autoimmune type of thyroid vitiligo. All oh, kinds of things. wow. And it wasn't until the vitiligo that I was like, okay, okay. Unconscious mind. Let's have a conversation. Cause what do you need to tell me? <laughs> um, and it, a lot of it was just slow down, enjoy life, have fun and be able to, you know, take a break every now and again, you don't have to work so hard. That was a lot of it. I felt like I had to work really hard to deserve any money I made. And so while mm. I had the confidence to deliver, it was really, um, I wouldn't even say like, it was the deserving part. That was a struggle. It wasn't collecting money. It wasn't, it was just, um, deserving. That was a yeah. struggle for me. Mm -hmm. So how, what tips do you, mm -hmm. you have? Because I will tell you, I had the same thing really? and still yeah. periodically struggle with the yeah. worthiness. Yeah. Um, cause I got stuck at a hundred thousand yeah. in my coaching business and couldn't mm -hmm. get above it. And I'm like, I have huge goals that in yeah. the millions and here I am stuck at a hundred thousand what's going on. And thank goodness. I had a really good business coach who's, who identified and said right away, it, you don't think you deserve more than that. So 
what, how, how can you overcome that tips on overcoming that? Yeah, please. So, if you have any. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so Cause I know I'm not the only one. You're not the only one. There's lots of us. Well, a lot of it's the inner work you hear about mindset a lot, you know? And when I look at like my fast track woman, like the framework, it really becomes around business strategies, which, which builds confidence. So you have your core business strategies in place. We culminate in a map, you know, so you have the whole plan. You have the, the mindset piece. And it's really about um, making sure they're in alignment, right? So everyone talks about mindset, mindset, mindset. What does that mean? And I used to roll my eyes and like, okay, all these people with all this like mindset work. And the more I rejected it, clearly the more I needed it. So I, you know, sometimes it's like, take a pause, work on integrating what your unconscious mind and mind, my conscious mind says, I deserve this. I work hard. I deserve a million dollars, but my unconscious mind was like, no, you don't little girl. Remember that one, you know? And it's like, you know, so you have to like get your unconscious mind, like in alignment with your conscious mind is from, from that perspective. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, Mm -hmm. you know, really looking at your price structure and your pricing model. Uh, and we all have a heart for wanting to serve people no matter where they are. Right. It's like, but what I found out over the the last, you know, three to five years was it's just as easy to sell somebody who has the money to pay you in full as it is to sell the person who's struggling and you're end up spending so much time and energy on helping them break through their money mindset issues. When it's Mm -hmm. like, I just want to get to work. And I, I, I'm like, I am jazzed about the transformation that people get. Mm -hmm. And the biggest Mm -hmm. thing, when I learned the lesson that (laughs) the more people will spend on your services or your products or whatever that instantly gets them a bigger transformation. I never understood mm. that. And mm-hmm. especially when I was selling the, I had 30 clients a month at three seventy five dollars a month, you know, um, when I raised the price, even to 500, like a year later, it was like, I attracted higher quality clients. And then I raise my prices again. And then all it takes mm-hmm. is you raising your prices to that point that makes you nervous and excited, right? And is to be able to get that first paying customer at that higher rate to go, oh, well, that's easy. And then you'll, uh, then you'll just continue to attract um, higher level people. Um, Cause sometimes our lower paying clients are the ones that give us a lot of grief and, Um, We just have to have, for me, I think a large part of the worthiness side was I needed to have stronger boundaries around myself and what I was willing to do and not do. Um, Because I would find at 375 a month, I would be waking up in the middle of the night, totally like worrying about people's business that they would get the sale or, you know, and I'm like, really? Like, I can't, I just can't, I need to sleep so I can be better, show up better the next day for my clients. And, you know, it's like, our clients don't just get our services and our, what they get our, you know, our, our time and our like, uh, ability to hold space for them. And so once, and when you can hold that space and do it well with confidence, you're going to attract that higher quality person, uh, customer that's going to not just, you know, like be a joy to work with, but they're going to go tell everyone about you, which is going to bring you referrals, which then just continues to feed the engine. And, yeah. So deserving and worth, if anyone's struggling with that, it's, it's worth doing the work and whether it's working with an NLP practitioner, doing therapy, um, there's all kinds of things or simply just raising your prices. I mean, I remember, I think it was James Wedmore. I met him at an event once and, um, I was talking to him and he said something really simple to me. He's like, I go, I need to feel like I need to raise my prices. And he's like, I'll just raise your prices. I'm like, I can't do that. And he's like, it's not hard. You log into WordPress and you raise the prices and it's done. It's all the crap you're telling yourself about it. And I was like, oh yeah, that was good. So, um, you know, and I never talked to him ever again after that, but like a little piece of advice was like, is that from a man's perspective? It's that easy because all this stuff's coming up for me when I think about raising my prices. (laughs) Um, so yeah, that's how I think about it now. It's like, okay, let's just log into the system and just change the price. I mean, it's not, and it takes, yeah, and it, it, once you do it a couple of times yeah. and once you did it and nothing horrible happened, like, well, I can tell you that when I tell, 
um, my clients to raise their rates. Yeah. Usually the first thing they say is what if I lose all my current clients? Right. And I'm like, that opens the door for hey, higher for paying new? clients. Heck yeah. 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 And for, for me, I just to stay in, cause we all have our own, you know, system or whatever. So for me to have the confidence to do it, I would say I would, my rule and it still is to this day. So trust me, I've got clients that pay me two grand a month. And then I've got ones that pay me a lower amount because I locked in their rate and I just told them I will never. Raise oh my gosh. I've done the same thing, clients. Tara. I've locked in rates before yeah. too. And yes. they're like, I mean, the clients that are locked in are like, I'm never leaving you. And I'm like, well, at some point <laughs> you're going to have to fly the coop. That, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And some of the first tasking I give clients who are like, I have this client. <laughs> oh, is this your, it's usually the lowest paying client. And I'm like, all right, you need to fire yes. them. I can't, well, no, you need to fire them and you need to hold your boundaries. And then within a week, they have a new higher paying client that they're thrilled with. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's about holding space and just yeah. about getting real with ourselves um, and mm -hmm. really owning our value because mm -hmm. we can't look to everyone else to assign our value. Um, we have to do it within Ooh. ourselves first. Yeah. Ooh, I love that. My nice job. That was good. say that, that again. Say that one I again. Don't, I hope I can. <laughs> I hope I can, Kathy. Oh my. Okay. Don't, it, um, don't have other people assign your value. Something like that. Yeah, Go ahead. We can't have anyone assign our value. Only we can do it ourselves. And if you're not Ooh, okay doing that, it. you got to do that inner work because whew, that, that inner confidence is everything, everything. And you know, one thing I would do and I'm just, like, we're just, this is like a great therapy session right now. Um, <laughs> but one thing I would do, I would like you know, someone be like, well, how much is it? You know, I want a business map, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, well, you know, it's, um, $6,000 and da, 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 da. And then I would start justifying like, Oh, and we talk and then you get this and that. And it's really like, people pay like a hundred thousand dollars for this time. Da, da, da. And now it's like, when I learn to just say the dang price and shut up, that's all it is. It's $6,000. Take a drink of water Beep. and mm -hmm. let them come back with the thing, you know, the objections. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm that's when the coaching begins, honestly, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And I never, it was never reframed like that until it was, I was like, yeah, that's brilliant. So now we just $6,000 sip water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't say a word. And that was like the best sales tip I ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. When people say, how do I get the words out of my mouth of this new price? Yeah. I'm like, you just force yourself to say it, say the word. Yeah. And just then, say it and don't even well then. So I, I am a master at playing like tricks with my brain. So I was like, okay, I can do that and take a drink. And then I would take the drink and then like, you know, they'd go, Oh, and I'd be like, well, we can get started for nine 95. You want to do a payment plan? I'm like, <laughs> Well, come on, Tara. Like, you know, it takes time to like evolve. Uh -huh. no, right. Just right. Assume they're going to pay full, right. Like they'll mm -hmm. ask if they want a payment plan. So mm -hmm. I don't even mm -hmm. sell like on my, on my consultations. I tell them I've pre-frame it at a time that says, we're going to talk. I'm going to give you this next best step to fast track your business, blah, blah, blah. If you want to work with me, you can ask me when we're done. Huh, sound good. Okay. And then it instantly takes the guard down that I'm going to be like, in sales mode, selling to them the whole time. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, thank you for those great tips on how to overcome that, um, worthiness issue and on how to raise your rates and how important it is to do so. And I love the tip of say the amount, take a drink of water. Basically what that means, keep yourself from saying anything. Yeah. Yeah. Like just be quiet. That's it. Yeah. Simple, you know, right. like, but yeah, right. simple. Yeah. Um, so another thing that you mentioned was that you started your business on the side while you were working your corporate job. So any tips yes. for that? Because I think that, I mean, that is at least half of not more than half of the people who yeah. um, work with me to become a virtual expert. They do it that way. Yeah. Brilliant so way tips to do on it. That? Brilliant way. Yeah. yeah. It um, the first thing is most virtual experts, I can venture to say that they're giving, uh, their 100% effort is most people's 50% of our effort. Mm. Cause if you have that entrepreneur spirit in you, you're bringing that to the corporate job and you're just mm -hmm. expending a lot of energy. So the first thing I would say is 
dial down, like, and you don't have to be in their mind, they're 150%. So how about instead of 150, why don't we just back down to like 75, right? So then you have some, you're saving some energy to build your thing on the side. Uh, the second thing is leverage, um, whether it's even volunteering at the company or asking you to training or whatever to be paid to learn, right? So go get an education while it's not costing you much. Right. And I'm saying, I can't even, I'm probably well, 150,000 into my, all the trainings and education I've taken in just my, this journey, the coaching journey, as I'm sure you, like no one wants to, I, Oh yeah. I'm tasking. I'm like, <laughs> calculate how much you've spent on e-courses, masterminds, learnings, trainings, conferences, and then let me know how much it is. And they'll come back with you know, like 75, I'm like, okay. And you don't, you don't think you're worth a thousand dollars. Like, let's just talk about right. that. Right. Yeah. Um, so get paid to learn. Um, I would also say if you can go part-time or it's kind of a mindset trick you can do. Um, I didn't realize I was such a mindset hacker of my own brain, but for me, I felt very tied to the company when I was getting the salary, the 401k, the benefits, whatever. And so I asked to go uh, contract. So then I was an independent contractor. That word alone gives you some independence. And then I treated my, my job, like they were like a client. So then rather than being, I went from, because they were, yeah. Mindset into, Oh, now you're just a client. You're a 50% client. And you know, for me, like if you can go part-time, you don't have to like, you know, it, it, the band aid doesn't, you know, hurt as bad. Um, but if you have to stay time, you know, full-time, just, you know, do what you need to do like during the week and the evenings, but also give yourself space, like time block, because nobody gets an award for working seven days a week and yourself out at, you know, work in the corporate, work in your business, actually have your downtime. Uh, this is why I'm psychotic about self-care with even my clients. And cause that's the only thing I think it literally saved my life. Cause if not, you'll stress out like crazy. Um, and so make Sunday, if I say Sundays is your you day for no work, right. Or a couple of days a week and at night, like that's a no work zone time. Um, because we have to like, you know, again, we just don't get an award for working seven days a week. Um, especially in our business, when you, when people do leave, I found, um, you know, a lot of, what do they say? What's the saying? Entrepreneurs will spend 80 hours a week working. So they don't have to work 40 in a corporate room. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, and at some point you're like, at what point? And you know what? It, yeah. it does feel that good. So yeah. That fulfilling. Yeah. At least that's my experience. And yeah. I'm guessing it's yours too. That's why. Um, yeah. That's right. But I also went into having my business of, I'm going to have boundaries around it. So, uh, the last thing you want to do is recreate, you know, like what you didn't want in the corporate world. So, for me, when I had my business, my, my non-negotiables were Monday through Friday. Um, you know, I, I don't people now until 10 AM. And then I usually work till like five or six, but like, cause I, I'm a night owl and I wanted to be able to wake up with no alarm clock and that's freedom to me. But some people are early risers, which is fine, but you set your work times, you know, and, um, it doesn't, it's not like Monday through Sunday whenever, and let me cater to you and your schedule. No, these, I work Monday through Friday from 10 to 6 PM and Fridays are flexible. And if I have all my work done and my clients are served, then I get to take Fridays off. I don't work weekends and I make sure to communicate that to my clients and our, um, in the intake process. And when they sign the contract, you know, I'll get back to you within 24 hours. I'm, I'm good with that, but it's 24 business hours. So they know, and nobody bugs me on the weekends. Nobody, because, you know, I've set those boundaries. I want to model them for them because I want that for them too. So yeah, I did like the structure of the corporate world. So I mimic that in my own business. I love those tips. I just had that conversation with somebody yesterday. They're like, I would love to just wake up without an alarm clock. And I'm like, you're the boss. Absolutely. And have you had the conversation, <laughs> I have a conversation with the boss? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm having a meeting. I say it with my husband, he comes in. He's like, cause he's been working. He worked at home during, you know, the quarantine and whatever. He's like, what do mm -hmm. you, I'm like, I've been working for two hours. You're in bed. Exactly. I'm on social media. Like, uh, you know, don't, <laughs> don't right. put your box. Like this is how I work. Uh, and 
And I get some of those, like I've, when I have conversations with fairly, you know, newer entrepreneur women, they're like, I wake up and I don't know what to do. Right. Like, I'm like, uh, what do I do? You know, like, cause the first, when you leave the corporate world, it's kind of like, okay, now what do I do today? Like, and I'm like, take your week to kind of acclimate to your new life. Uh, and then just put some structure around because to me, it, my Google calendar is very indicative of how much money I'm making. And so Google is my boss or my Google calendar is my boss. Um, and I just do whatever it says to do. Like it said today at this time, we're recording this podcast. So that's <laughs> what I'm doing. So I just, yeah. And just book myself. I love my that. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big proponent of time blocking too. Yeah, love- um, my whole calendar is time blocked. I teach time blocking. So it, it works. It and works. I don't have to-do lists anymore. All my to-do is on my calendar. Yep. And you get the, yeah. the entrepreneurs that are like, but I'm creative and I want to fly. I'm like, fine. Time block creative time. Like Tuesdays exactly. doing whatever you want to do. Meditate all day. I don't care. Just time block it and get the rest of your stuff done. Mm-hmm. You can design mm-hmm. it however you want. Yes. But I right. time block, but I had one client once who she, um, did a VIP day with me because she wanted to do more like better time management. And I was like, okay. And so I was like, all right, I was thinking, oh, we'll do time blocking. Cool. That's always a good exercise. And she comes and I had never seen her calendar was down to like the minute mark. And I'm like, um, I've never seen anything like this, like literally. And then I take five minutes to go do like brush my teeth. And then, oh my God, no, "Um, no, that's not really time blocking. That's, that's crazy. That's yeah. No, so, that's, yeah. that's, that's rough on yourself. Yeah. And I'm like, let's chunk up and like, really yeah. at, like having some more flexibility in your life <laughs> because that's going to like, I was stressed looking at that calendar. There's a good balance so, as we know it's about balance. Yes. Yes. So you are known for fast track to success. So what does that mean to you? What does fast track to success mean? And just talk about that for a little bit, because I've always said that I want the fast track. That's what I've, Mm -hmm. that's kind of how I've always phrased it, but I want to know what it means to you. Yeah. So I work with a lot of high achieving women. It's like, they don't under, they're very smart and they're high achievers. So they don't understand why the heck they've been working their butt off in their business and they're not further along. And so those are my people. And I'm like, all right, cool. So what I found is when your business isn't built in a very like sequential order, then there's all these gaps that happen. So say somebody, one of the common ones is a woman's like, I'm going to start my business. I spent 5,000 on my website and I have $3,000 on my branding. And then I've got, Oh my God, I love you so much. <laughs> no, but it's true. That is You're exactly laughing, what you know, I see. True. I see the same thing. And I'm like. Okay. So we're in for like 15 grand. Do you have a client? Well, no. What do you sell? I don't know. And I'm like, okay, here lies the problem. And so then they have grit and they have hustle and they'll figure out how to make it happen and whatever. And then it's like, but what happens is they end up having what I call a Frankenstein business model. So it's like, yeah. So then my job is to, how do we go into that and fill in the gap? So I said, okay, er, let's pull back. Let's pull back the curtain. Let's look under, under the skirt here and see what's going on. And what I found was a lot of women will just railroad through the foundation of their business, getting like core values, who you serve, um, who you are, what do you do? Like some basic things. Like I had, we had strategic give back into everyone's business model because when you're working and you're donating your time and your money to something that's greater than you makes you get out of the bed, bed, bed a lot easier. And, and so, and then, but the branding one usually is like, Oh yeah, the branding, I've got this. And then it's like, okay, you've spent 15 grand on, on branding and, and then well, so then we do the foundation and then after that's an alignment, then we get clear on the signature offers and how much your pricing strategy, right? Then the third step is, okay, how do I sell this thing? What's my process on how I sell it? And then the fourth thing is great. I know who I am, what do I do, what I'm selling, um, how much I'm selling it for and how I sell it. Now let's go get you leads, which is visibility and your marketing strategy. Then from there, it's like, okay, how do I deliver what I sold? 
Now I need this like customer delivery experience, my onboarding, how do I deliver? And then what do I, how do I transition after somebody buys the product or service? And, and then the last part is the dream team. And this is why I love what you do, because if women can have all this stuff outlined, when you hand it over to a virtual expert, they're like, oh, I don't have to figure it all out myself. You, oh, yeah. you have a vision. Um, and then they can support you so much easier uh, because the first thing I'll get women who are like, I just need help. I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I need a virtual assistant. I need an executive assistant. I need a, and I'm like, okay, well, like, what are they going to do? Well, I don't know. Like I'm assuming that's why they're paying. Like they can figure it out what I need to do. I'm like, so you need a project manager of yourself, you know? And it's just kind of like, you, you got to set the vision, the tone, the, what it is. And then they're going to be so much more effective. They're not going to, they're going to feel like they're contributing. You're going to be like loving them and paying that invoice immediately. Cause you know, like how they're supporting you in your business. Um, and a lot of the times, you know, women will come in with a really strong sales process because they're a master at sales. Uh, but their marketing is, eh, um, you know, their foundation, they've got the great brand, right? <laughs> and then when we do like the client profile and the customer journey and stuff like that, they're like, oh, my branding's pink and glittery. I want to work with men, you know? So you're like, all right, well, sorry about that $15,000 in branding. Uh, we're going to need to change colors and, and whatnot. So it's like, it needs to be a full picture to me. And once you have that big picture, I mean, out of the 175, you know, maps we've done, it's like, rarely does a woman not cry at the end or eyes tear up or mm, some emotion yeah. comes up because they're like, mm -hmm. this is exactly what I was thinking. And I, it's all coming together. Aww. I can see it now. Aww. And then when they see it all, Ooh, then the confidence skyrockets and they can hand their map to whoever comes on their team. And, you know, and like, it's just, we don't, we take more time figuring out what restaurant we want to go to on a Saturday night <laughs> than we do like our business strategy sometimes. Cause we just, well, we definitely, um, take more time figuring out all the logistics of our next vacation yeah. uh, that than yeah. uh, figuring out our business. I know yeah. I've probably been guilty of that, but I, I got tickled in the beginning when you're saying that, because that's exactly what I see is, um, people will come to me and say, I already have my website. I already have my brand. I already have my logo. Yeah. I already have all of that, but I don't have any clients. And I'm like, well, it's, have you been spending your time on anything other than the website, the brand and the logo? Uh, no. What was I supposed to be doing? Yeah. Marketing. Do you do any and of that? I don't no, market myself. Be, I, I can't market myself. <laughs> yeah. I can't put myself. I can there. market everyone yeah, but me. Like, oh my gosh. We need to like create some. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and I say this and we laugh because this was me at, at, when I was spending well, my yeah. life. So uh, yeah. I and I'm, I'm laughing out of just the similarity to our experiences right. and because we, you're saying yeah. the words that I've said yesterday, right. I talked about, okay, are you doing busy work or mm -hmm. are you actually doing the work that you need to get reach your yeah. next goal? And that, and you know why they do the busy work? because it's easier to stay hidden. That's it's right. Easier to stay and it feels side. like you're still working. Yeah. It feels you can, you can trick yourself to think that, mm -hmm. to think that, but look, I'm doing something. Yeah. But you're not moving the needle. Believe me, I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. To move the needle in the business. You don't, I have, I have friends who are multimillionaires. They don't have a website. They're not on Facebook. They're not on Instagram. You know, it takes, um, having a product or an offer of some sort. And I mean, I, I, if women come to me and they're like in that lull, I'm like, all right, let's kickstart your sales. And it's a matter of like, okay, make a list of 20 of the most influential people, you know, and I want to see your calendar filled for the next two weeks of just some coffee conversations and getting to see where, where they are. And guess what? They're going to ask you what's going on with you. And then you tell them about your, your offer that we just created. That's it. Like it, it, that's how I built my business. I did like a, co a three day coach -a -thon right? Where I just serve, 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 serve. Um, and then, you know, people will, Oh, well, how do I work with you? Or can I hire you or whatever? And it's like, yeah, that's how you can fill your roster. Do that. Like once a quarter it, and then you don't need to have all the other stuff. You know, it's like we mm. over surprise, surprise. We overcomplicate <laughs> everything. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have so overcomplicated everything. Yeah. And now I'm trying to pull back and simplify everything. Yes. 
Oh, well, and so I, I, I said to check myself. That's funny for the like five years in my business. My word of the year was simplicity. And it wasn't mm. until like year six where I picked a new word that, oh, I figured out the whole simplicity thing. And then I had Kathy, this is embarrassing. I'm, I've maybe told one person this. I had like 24 offers at one time, which also had 24 lead magnets, which also had 24 funnels, which, but none of them, they weren't wow. working right or whatever. It was insane. And then I said, whoop. And you just I made to- me feel better because I yeah. have a lot also, but I don't have 24. <laughs> yeah, because I had a menu. I, when I first started, I was like, I had a menu. I ordered it on eBay because to order a menu online, they think you're a restaurant and you have to have a thousand. So I ordered this like random leather menu on, uh, I just got it on eBay and I put, I printed out my prices and put them in there and I carried around my little menu with my beautiful leather. I still have it somewhere. I took it to one of the live events I did and showed everyone. And I was like, and then something about having a menu made me feel more legit or something, which is so crazy. Um, and it had like, it had like 20 things that I could do. It's like, and to a point where, you know, here I was business coach. I knew I wanted to serve women and help them grow their business. And I ended up, I was like doing websites because people would be like, I like your website. This was like eight websites ago for me, eight brands ago. <laughs> and they would say, I lo- who did it? I'm like, I did it. Will we do mine? Sure. I didn't have much else going on. And then I was like, you're going to pay me how much a thousand dollars. Okay. And then I got like, you know what? I was doing the website thing. And then I was like, I'm going to scale this. So I'm going to, I had a team in the Philippines that would do the sites and whatever. The most I ever charged was 3000. And then it was like, no matter how you could scale it, the profit always stayed the same. And I'm like, cause I just keep mm. having to hire more people in the Philippines. Right. And when you were in the website business, uh, unless you have super strong boundaries, which I didn't back then, it never ends. The website worked oh, yeah. it on for years. That, I, yeah. Do you think scope creep that, oh. taught that, that wording was created by yeah. a, what the first website designer yeah. who was like, this yeah. scope is creeping me. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. And it was, they were probably men too. Cause when, Oh, okay. I'll make that change. It's only takes you a minute. <laughs> um, you know, so I was like, well, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. I rehomed all my, uh, Filipino, Filipino employees and was like, okay, get back to basic one offer. So I did the one coaching thing, got burnt out. And I was like, okay, rethink. Then I, when I launched, uh, my next thing, I didn't do the one-on-one coaching. I just l- launched a mastermind. So I had a mastermind exclusively for a few years. That's all I did. Um, and then I was like, okay, I can roll in some, the one-on-one coaching side. Then I launched the group and then, yeah, now I'm like going to be transitioning more into just the high performance one-on-one coaching. Um, and my other little business I was talking to you about earlier and that just feels good. So it's like, I don't want to feel like we're all everywhere. And when that happens, right. it's time to get really clear and simple and focus on one thing, just one thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm so glad you mentioned it. Cause I just had typed myself a little note that said <laughs> to remember to talk about that before we were out of time here. So can you talk about your new e-commerce venture? Yeah. Cause so I'm super I, excited about it <laughs> and I know yeah, you are. So I, oh, I'm so excited about it. And it's been one of these things that I've been wanting to have a product for a long time but I didn't know how it played in. And I think I was trying to force it to play into my current business model. So I would play it around with, Ooh, maybe I could do like a candle line or perfume or something that would be like tied into, um, you know, confidence and like the brand I had already created and it'd be for women entrepreneurs and whatever. And I'm like, I don't know, nothing was sticking. So Um, it was just one, an idea I had when I was in the shower, like all of our good ideas that come to us and it was like, oh, brooches. So I have this thing where I have a quite a collection of Chanel brooches and I love brooches and there's something about them that just feels fun and allows you to like show your personality, but they're classy and I don't know. So, and I think they're romantic too. There's something romantic think, about them too. There's like an heirloom Nostalgic. About it. Yes. You connect with great grandma or something. I don't know. It's, it's really, it, they're so much fun. And I have all those feelings about them too. I think a lot of women must I think we, yeah. And we can kind of like 
show off a little bit of personality and whatever with them. Uh, but you know, so for me, and I collected Chanel brooches, I I've done it for a while and it wasn't until even a few years ago, I started talking about it because I didn't want anyone to think, Oh, Tara's so bougie. Oh, you know, like, you know, all my inner talk, my self-talk of like, oh. <laughs> like, and it's like, Oh my gosh, people collect art. People collect cars. People collect dogs. Like I just collect brooches. Um, I have boxes and they have names and homes and like, it's, this one's from Paris. And you know, like I talk to them like, Ooh, that. yeah, that's neat. It's, it's interesting. So I'm like, I don't know. And then when my friends come over, I'm like, do you want to see all the brooches? And like, we play with them and yeah. And so for me, there's a market for high-end brooches. I mean, Chanel brooches go. And for me, the brooch is important, but it's also about the hunt. That's really fun. So when I travel, I'm like, oh, I get to go into this Chanel and maybe they will have one of the ones I've been, cause it's like a, it's like crazy cult community of like people who collect brooches. And I did not know that Yeah, it, it's a whole thing. Like I, I didn't know it. And it's like, you gotta like be in the know. Cause like, yeah, it's certain stores get certain things in Europe. They get other collections. Like it's a whole thing. And, um, I was like, all right, so mine's about the hunt. I love the pieces but it's also high end. Like they start, you're lucky to maybe find one at for $400 and they go up to like 1200, whatever. And I was like, why is there no middle market for brooches? Like, and then you can find the little like cheesy ones that are like a Christmas tree that, you know, like with lots of sparkles and I don't know. So you can find them for a couple bucks or hundreds of dollars. So I'm like, mm -hmm. why is there no middle market? Like, so I started doing research and my idea came in the shower and it was like, I need to, why can't I do this? And there's a certain approach to being able to like style brooches, um, you know, build your collection. Each one has a story, that kind of thing. And I'm like the brooch approach. And so I was like, yeah, so it was born. And I sat on the idea for a couple of days, um, made, I would test it with people to, you know, sometimes you want to do the crazy scale. Am I crazy? Or and then, you know, you start looking at like, I started doing the search engine and looking to see, and it's like, wow, there's a lot of people, you know, it just seems like a wide open market for me. <laughs> I was like, like it was, it's just been gifted down to me. And I'm like, it's, I got to do this. And so, um, like I'm modeling, like to me, I want to be the Kendra Scott of brooches. So like that great, Ooh, price I love me. that. Yeah. I mean, and that's like my same avatar too, is like, you know, 38 to $58, like little piece of luxury we can give ourselves or gift to others. And you can build out your own collection that tells a story. And, um, I just, I see so many tentacles with it. Um, so hence the brooch approach is born. And of course there's a framework of a step-by-step -step of how you do it. Cause you know, we gotta have some, <laughs> because you did your own business map. Yes, because we got to have, mm -hmm. everyone needs a framework in their business. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in the branding, I didn't spend $15,000 on it. I just created it in oh. Canva and, <laughs> and it's stunning. <laughs> it's like, we overcomplicate everything. And so everything uh -huh. I've learned and I get to like, finally be my own best client, which I tell my oh, clients. All I love time. you. Yeah. And when I get to assign my business analyst to do a business map for the brooch approach, I felt pretty powerful. And I'm also very confident it's going to be successful. So yeah, it just feels right. And so anyone I've tested it on, they're like, that's so you, that's so you, that's so you. And I'm like, thank you. Like, it's just all came together. So um, yeah, I just, it's a market that I love and I'm super passionate about. And I wanted to do e-commerce e for a while. So it's going to be an online brooch store um, launching in September of 2021. September of 2021 is yeah. when it's launching. Do you yeah. have a URL yet? I do that, it's, you know, yeah. will be, it is like, cause this podcast won't be out until then or later. So oh, perfect. if yeah, you it's don't broach. mind, go ahead and talking about it. Absolutely. Broach approach.com B R O O C H approach.com. And yeah, and shop the collections. And if the stories inspire you, um, and now that I'm like NLP master certified, you know, we know how to use words to like infuse things. Um, and so, yeah, any brooch that goes out the door is going to be infused with a lot of, um, powerful words and confidence so that that translates whenever the, the person puts it on, I want them to feel, um, confident too. So my whole tagline is clasp 
for confidence. So all you gotta do is class. Oh, I love it. Class yeah. for confidence. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So that's what um, I know you have, I know you have an example there and uh-huh. if you don't want to show it, that's fine. No, but if you okay. do, I, I mean, I was it. excited about it, but yeah. when I saw it, I was like, and show the whole thing, the box, the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. If I you am. don't mind. Totally. And so if you're not watching this on video on YouTube, you're going to want to go there now. Yeah. <laughs> Pause so, this, go to YouTube. <laughs> I love it. So the box is like a light, like a, like a off white and then the brooch mm-hmm. approach. And then mm-hmm. it has a drawer and it comes out. <gasps> I right? love the drawer. The drawer. I love the drawer. Because it's all, it's about the experience. And then inside is a uh, beautiful suede pouch that says it's embossed brooch approach. And then mm. you just open your little gift and out comes an example. I have, this is the Elizabeth, which is a crown. Um, yeah. And so this one is with like, pearls this and wait a second. Pearls, and now I can see you've stuff. actually got rhinestones yes okay oh, it yeah. already is silvery blade. looking because when yeah, i first saw it i thought well that is very yeah. rose gold is it rose gold also no, no it's more of a, it's a gold yeah it's just probably gold. harder to okay see. and then when All you right. wear it this is a great gorgeous. topper brooch it's gorgeous you can wear multiple brooches at one time so that tells a story so you've got the crown under it you could have another brooch so imagine like having even for me like i will wear my chanel brooches and i'll put this crown on top Cause then it kind of tells a story. Um, if I could wear all a million of my brooches and maybe I'll do a photo shoot where I'll do that. But I mean, you can, you don't just wear one. Uh, so yeah. And so I'm super excited and got the, well, I am going to tell you right now, Tara, as soon as they're available to buy, I oh, said, so- where do I get on the list? How do I find out when it's available? <laughs> um, yeah. do I just, will you email me? Because I, I, I can't even wait. Um, I'm going to be yeah. one of your uh-huh. I'm I'm gonna be a big huge fan and I can't wait to buy some brooches from you. Thank you. Yeah, it's just gonna be um you can go to brooachapproach.com and then there's like um you can join the brooch beauty club. So and just get on the mailing list too. Yeah, we're gonna have like that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Yeah, so super fun. It sounds like fun. Okay. And yeah. uh, all of a sudden, I'm sure you've had a million ideas like this. I'm like, oh, are you going to have a club? And can I be part of it? And are we going <laughs> to? Yes. And there's a, there's going to be after, um, through the, I'm going to get through Christmas and then I'm going to launch the brooch of the month club, which will be an ex- exclusive Ooh. brooch for a, you know, a price Ooh. every month. We'll just ship them to yes. automatically. Yes. I want, we oh have, Oh my God. A, that's awesome. I love that. I have brooch boxes. So like I have like had to source and find uh like jewelry boxes with glass tops that are specific that will hold brooches. Um because oh. they're a very unique size. It's not like you can't oh. have earrings or whatever. So um my husband, I'm married to an engineer and so he's like, ooh, we're on that. So we're gonna source the boxes with like the brooch approach logo on it so that people can build their collection and tell their own story. So yeah. And so I'm really excited. There's just and that's just um three of the things. I mean, there's a million ways that this is going to. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't think you know this. I live in a tiny house, so I don't have room to actually have like, uh, something that is horizontal. That's horizontal, right? (laughs) Yeah. 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 I need something like on the wall that I could put my brooches in (laughs) because then it's artwork. Yes, and usable. Yes. And that's, and then it needs to be lit. So at night it just Ooh, looks me- lit. So I love that's that. That's in the works yes. too. That's in the works. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. You are speaking my thing. language. And Tara, I don't even like jewelry. I'm not a jewelry person. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. But as you can tell, I like tiaras. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, this tiara is the centerpiece right here is a brooch. And these two little things here, those are brooches. I love and it. I just fell in love with that whole concept. And as soon as you said brooches, I thought of this and I thought if I have a brooch and yeah. a tiara, I'm going to be so set. Absolutely. And then, so you've got <laughs> the tiara and then a lot of women, when they're getting married, they're getting them as gifts to put in their bouquets as they're walking down the aisle. Oh, you know? so I love I'm that idea. Just a new and as gifts for their bridesmaids. Perfect. And, and I'm not just a fan of, you know, Chanel brooches or, you know, the brooch approach brooches. I like, if you like vintage brooch, like this is a thing, like you can just, if you love it and it speaks to you, you should, you mm-hmm. should. And there are these, little yeah. small, 
like indulgent things that we can get that make us feel good. Right. And yeah, absolutely. Out. Yeah. They're just versatile. Oh, I am so excited <laughs> for you. Thank I'm you. excited for you because this is a great business idea oh. and I'm excited for me and all the other people who get to enjoy this because it really is, it is. Mm-hmm. And I love the price point because that's something mm-hmm. that you can buy for yourself without no guilt. feeling, you know, like mm-hmm. you got to go in debt or anything. Yep. And then, you know, I, you were talking about the mind tricks that you do. I do too. And I will say, okay, if I get this done, then I'm going to mm-hmm. give myself X. And a lot of yes. times it's going shopping on Amazon. <laughs> yep. I know. Now, now I'm going like, to get I'm gonna it. Sign a new client. I'm going to go to brush coach and get the next one. That's right. Yeah. And yeah, you exactly. want to talk about like from a business perspective and, net- and networking. I mean, you wear a brooch on your dress or your jacket or your t-shirt as we talked about, whatever, like that gives mm-hmm. people instantly something, especially like I'm. I'm an ambivert. I'm mostly extroverted, but like, sometimes I have to just go at home and read my Kindle and not talk to people, you know? So I have to be in the mood to network. And sometimes, you know, you show up at whether it's a conference or a networking meeting or whatever. And, but if you wear a brooch it instantly, I guarantee people are going to come up to you and go, brooch, I like your pe- pen or whatever they call it. And it gives right. it's an icebreaker and like, Oh, right. thanks, you know, and you could tell the story of it or whatever. And I mean, it's an easy way to start a conversation to transition into mm-hmm. what do you do? You know, instead of the classic, tell me about right. your business, you know, like let's <laughs> bond over something more fun to start with, you know? So yeah. Every time I well, wear, I'm one, super ex- Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Every time you wear I just one, said, every I- time I wear one, I mean, there isn't a time that someone doesn't say something. So yeah. I love that. I love that. I really feel like we're, you and I are going to be friends. Um, yeah. I, I, I feel very close to you right now <laughs> over the brooch Good. and well, everything else we talked about. We got the Midwestern vibe. Yeah, yes. Sure. We also have that going. We also have that going. So Tara, this has just been absolutely delightful. Thank you so much for being on my podcast. Um, is there, are there, um, I know we've talked about your site where people can go for your brooches. What if they want to yep. work with you um, in your business other than your brooch sure. business? Um, yeah, or so, want a business um, do, map from you. Absolutely. So we, everything, every client I work with starts with a five-year plan because I don't know where to help you go if we're not clear on where you want to go. So I give away on my website, uh, the, a workbook that walks you through and I, my paying clients do the, like they do this too. I give this away for whether we work together or not. I know this will help you to get a lot of clarity on your five-year plan because then your business model can match that and it can help you scale faster when we know where we're going. And it, and it's not a five-year business plan. It's, it has a business side in there, but it's also important to know from your life where you want to be in five years. So I have this beautiful mm, workbook I like that. Um, for free. You just go to tarabolman.com slash workbook, or on my homepage, you'll see a link where you can opt in for it and I'll email it to you and you know, you can fill it out and it just gives you so much clarity on where your business is going to be in the next five years. So yeah. And it's just Tara Bowman, T E R R a the last name's Bowman B O H L M A N N. So it's two ends.com slash workbook. Yeah. And that's there for you. It's a free gift for you. Tara, thank you so much. I love a free gift <laughs> and that sounds really valuable. And, um, I just can't wait to get to know you better and be uh, a proud owner of Bridges. Broach approach brooches. Yay! <laughs> Perfect. Look forward to it. Thank you so much, Kathy. This was so much fun. To dare to leap, say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share her feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm-hmm.